Hey, what's up guys? It is Repmark here. So finally doing my uh, Jungle Cruise review. It is a bit late. A lot of stuff going on. You know, watch my vlogs. That's usually where I tell you all the personal stuff and what my plans are for the week are and uh, what I was able to do the previous week. Um, but yeah, so let's get right on to it. So Jungle Cruise, this is uh, Disney's latest uh, sort of fun adventure type thing. Um, and I have to say I was, I was very impressed. I did not have high expectations. I mean, I knew it was going to be silly. I knew it was going to be fun. I didn't think it would be as good as I as it ended up being for me. Um, God, I'm so itchy. Ugh. There's a lot of smoke up in the air. It is really like if you have allergies or breathing issues, it it freaking sucks. So, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of my nose is a little bit itchy. As well as my throat, but well, that's fine. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's so this is based on the the Disney ride at at Disneyland, uh, Jungle Cruise, and for a, a movie based literally on a ride, adding everything, it actually did really well. Like um, like the casting was great. Um, I thought the the scenes were great. The only thing I would have said is that there were a there was a little too much CGI, like and not great CGI either. Like there's especially towards the end of the films when things really picked up pace and you're like going at a million miles an hour. It's uh, the CGI wasn't uh, it it kind of just detracted a bit from it. But I mean overall, I mean the story was it was decent. Um, it was. Fun. I like the chemistry between the characters. It was uh, it was a really interesting watch. Um, one thing I wasn't the biggest fan of, and I'll get into it more in the spoilers, was the whole romantic thing between Frank and uh, what's her name, Lily. Yeah, Frank and Lily. Um, so they... I'll get into that a little bit in the spoilers, uh, but you'll see what I mean on that. It just seemed a little bit forced. Um, I mean, that's all I'll really go into depth with this. I'll get into more in the spoilers. Um, I mean, either than that, I mean... I really liked most of the character choices that make the villain was amazing. He was, <laughs> well, not amazing, but he was pretty good. Like, I really enjoyed him. So he's, I forget what that actor's name is. It is Jesse Clements. Is that who it is? Yes, Jesse Clements. So he played uh, Prince Hawking, the uh, youngest son of the Kaiser. So <laughs> yeah, he was he was fun. It was oh my gosh, and the music. I did I did enjoy the music. Let's see what else have we got. Um, I mean, just the pacing was good. It didn't seem overly long. That's, I mean, that's really all that I can go into to cover this. I mean, I thought this was a really well done. If there's anything I would say, though, it seemed very derivative of, say, like, The Mummy. Uh, <laughs> very derivative. Like, when you take a look at the the brother, uh, Lily, and, like, like. You'll understand what I mean when you see this movie, um, but yeah, other than that, it was it was great. I would honestly give this. I'm gonna give this an an, an a, um, I'm gonna give this a seven to ten. Like the CGI just kind of brings it way too way too much for me, but uh, 
other than that, it's it's definitely a good watch. Like this is definitely something I'd recommend you see, especially if you have kids. Like super fun, definitely worth a watch. So I uh, I think that's really all that it, uh, there needs to be said for this uh, on the non-spoiler count. So we will go to the spoiler section after this. So I'll see you then. Hey guys, it is Retmark here, back with the spoilers for uh, Jungle Cruise, the Disney, newest Disney film, based on the ride of the same name, at Disneyland Jungle Cruise. So, I really like how they had period pieces, so I'm going to start with that because we start with a very beginning, like, period piece, <laughs> like... It's the Conquistadors, which I mean at that at that time, you know, the the Reconquista has already begun, so I mean it's already pretty much ended. Like Conquistadors were the ones who were going into the New World. And yeah, this one covers Al uh Don Agare, who was an actual Conquistador who went into Brazil. Um, but yeah, it's like searching for the the blood or the tears of the moon. So a flower that would uh, would heal any illness. So shows that they sort of betray the after a lot of death, you know, they betray the tribe um, and they get stuck in, in the jungle so that's where we go from that from there we go to frank who is a river boat captain and he is he's having some trouble he's he, he's apparently a very shady guy so he oh he he bought this engine couldn't pay the guy back but i digress first of all so he's taking this tour group you know, a bunch of rich, white, European, I would assume, people. And this uh, takes place, from what I'm reading, about 1916. So World War One-ish time. Um, but yeah, he's taking a bunch of just, you know, white, rich people through this. And there's just a whole bunch of, like, fake stuff. <laughs> uh, so he has, like, a fake hippopotamus, you know, tr a tribe which is like in on the action like it's an actual tribe but it's definitely in on it on the action to you know he pays them to scare people and then he charges them extra to either speed up the the trip or or to show more interesting things or whatever or get them out of here uh, it's, so yeah, he's a shit, he's essentially a con man, you know, and then that's where we go into his, his engine gets re repossessed by the person that he had to borrow money to borrow, to get it. So from there we go into the, uh, Royal Academy, I believe that's what it's called, yes, Royal Society, there we are, um, listening to this talk about someone and the tears of the moon you don't know who it is it's lily's brother um it'll get into that later so he's essentially distracting all these people while she goes and looks for a piece found in an expedition what was it, it was um it was an arrowhead there you go it was an arrowhead um so she's essentially going to steal it. It's a key to some to unlocking where she will find the tears of the moon and in between sneaking in. Like I love how fun she was. <laughs> it just looked very fun in between everything. And this is the 1916s, you know. She does r run into Prince Joachim. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but who knows. 
it's just fun to say uh, and it, it shows like the mentality of the age is just like she's wearing pants like it and that's a running joke of the whole movie is she's wearing pants there's a point in time where the undead conquistadors or the immortal conquistadors are just like she's wearing pants <laughs> in spanish they say it in spanish <laughs> uh but yeah it's it's a running joke she wears pants she's in this explorer's like type outfit but she runs into him he's just like uh the secretary of you you're not supposed to be here the secretary viewing room is uh up there you know doesn't think anything of it he's there to buy from the royal society the arrowhead itself she gets there first she sneaks into the room and this leads into a a massive like try to get it scene which again i enjoyed a lot i did enjoy like the the fun action scenes as cheesy as they were they were fun to watch so it ends up with her falling out of a ladder out the window and he's just like you know give me the the arrowhead and i'll i'll help you so she hands the package it was in and he lets the ladder drop And he doesn't have it. <laughs> it's some toy bird. All right. And then from there, we go back to the boat where Lily and her brother. What is her brother's name? That is... McGregor. So he goes with her. He's complaining. You know, he's kind of a, a an oddball, goofball, likes... Likes having a lot of stuff you know he's kind of pompous but i mean it's it's kind of endearing as well I, I did enjoy his character so they're looking for a riverboat captain they think they found one in oh gosh i need to sneeze nilo okay <laughs> ah good grief the allergies oh the particulates in the air suck ah Nilo, played by played by a Paul. I always forget this. Giamatti. There we go. Paul Giamatti. What he is very good at. Who I actually really enjoy. He plays a small role in this, but it was still a fun one. But so she mistakes friends for him, Frank for him. Uh, they're talking. She sends her brother before. She finds him, uh, and he finds the actual one in the hotel, and that's when she realizes that Frank's been lying to her this whole time. He just want, wanted her to try to get his engine back because so that he could get it into his boat and use it to, you know, use his boat. And from there, another weird fight scene. It's... And this is one where there's the kind of crazy CGI. Like there was, this was the good CGI though at first. There's a scorpion and a spider fighting, and that was CGI. Uh, it was very good CGI though. And then, yeah, there starts a there's a fight starting when um, Nilo comes in, uh, and then a cat, a jaguar comes in and is just like scary everybody and he and frank's just like i'm gonna take him on and wrestles this cat and it, there's even a joke that as they're rolling and tussling there's like the scorpion and the the, the spider just like rearing up and they're just like both of them are just like oh hell no <laughs> and then it runs he cuts a piece of meat throws it out the window out goes the cat you find out the cat's in on it later so they're running to get the boat. Apparently Lily can't swim, so she has to go. She does a zip line to the thing. And yeah, so they es they escape the owner of the river boats <laughs> to essentially uh then you see the submarine and so Prince Joachim has come and he is going to get that arrowhead. 
So it's insane. Like, how is there room for a, a submarine in here, let alone a torpedo, which is launched? And then they just sail through the air on a weird ramp in a warehouse and it goes under them and I don't know man it was it was it was kind of cheesy but it, again it was I liked the kind of cheesy like this was a good kind of cheesy all right so they go you know they've He convinces her to stay, stick with him, so she does, and while they are traveling, you know, she goes into his room, discovers all these, like, modern contraptions, and then all these maps and stuff of the Tears of the Moon, and she realizes that she's been lying to him about, <laughs> you know, trying to find this, because he said he'd, he'd given up, or no, that he didn't know what that was about. But he does. He said he'd stopped looking for it. And then at some point they get attacked by by natives again. You know, it's just like they're cannibals. It's just like, oh no, I didn't have a chance to call this off, you find out. Like the whole thing was a play. Uh, you go back to Joaquim again. So somehow he knows where these conquistadors are, even though Frank trapped them a while ago. You find that out later. But yeah, they were trapped a long time ago, and somehow he knew where to find them. But uh, yeah, so he diverts the river. You know, first he takes a dropper of Amazon water to actually just sort of revive them. And... Offers them a deal. He will send them free as long as they help him. So that's where he made. So I'll. So you have. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. The 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 main guy, like he's infested with snakes. You have one who's infested with bees, who's like covered in honey. One made of mud. One that's made of wood. You know, they've just been, the, the force has just completely consumed them. But anyway, um, so there's that. So she finds out that the whole thing was a lie, and she's just like, I don't know if I can trust him anymore. And so that leads to a big fight. You know, they she storms off. But then the conquistadors, they come, and then they fight, and it, again, really, really weird CGI stuff going on. Um, but in the end, oh yeah, and then there's a jungle rope s scene where he goes, doesn't quite make it, I don't know. And then, the, like, there's a whole romantic thing going on with them. I think it kind of works in the, like, will they, won't they kind of thing. But, I mean, they literally, like, crammed that romance down your throat. And I just, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Like, I could see them as, like, friends or, like, you know, I could see a little bit of flirting. Like, again, will they, won't they. But, yeah, it just seemed they really tried to cram that romance down your throat. And it was, it just wasn't quite working for me and that's another thing that just detracted from this movie as well but yeah in in the midst of the fight with the conquistadors uh frank gets stabbed you know falls like he's dead he's dead he's gone uh, lily escapes with her brother they find frank the next day completely revived it's just like what happened and so there you find the truth Frank, his real name is actually Francisco. He was one of the conquistadors himself, the fifth one that survived. And he tells the whole story about how Don Aguare, or however you say that, he was doing this for his sick daughter. Um, and there were only four, five that survived, and 
like including him. And then it shows the whole native piece. And again, I love the period pieces. I love any movie that does period pieces. They are solid, good, and I love it. Um, but yeah, uh, so he ends up attacking him. So Frank, it was discovered, you know, betrayed him by like siding with the villagers. It's just like, don't do this. Don't do this. And so he was killed. But before he died, you know, before the chief died, the chief cursed them all to be, to live forever, but they could never leave the site of the Amazon um, or else it would pull them back. So as time went on, you know, the daughter escapes with the key, um, but as time went on, you, they, he kept being hunted down by the four other conquistadors until eventually he traps them in a cave so that they're out of sight of the river, but they can't be pulled back somehow. I, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's some things that you just sort of have to accept as sort of the fun. And I kind of get that. And then there, there's some things that just make no sense whatsoever. Uh, and this is one of them. They just get stuck in there. And that's where, you know, their bodies start to be consumed by the jungle. So, after that, so he tells about this. They go and they... So, her brother, uh, McGregor, breaks his foot. So he goes to stay with the tribe. Uh, in route, though, he gets caught by Prince Joachim. And is forced to tell them what their uh, what the plan is for this. So then you go back to the plan. They find the place where it's just like you know, where you got to turn water into rock. And I wish there had been more puzzles. Like, honestly, that would have been really, really cool. Like, you know, kind of like a Tomb Raider thing or something, you know, where you have to sort of figure stuff out. And this was the only one, uh, but yeah, it was kind of lame and it was really simplistic and it made no sense whatsoever how native tribes could create this. But anyway, so there's under, under the water, there's this thing that's a little too thin for Frank to get into, but Lily can squeeze in and you just have to pull a lever. That's it. But she gets stuck and... Yeah, she gets stuck, and uh, you, but yeah, after pulling this leather, the water all drains out. You know, the water goes down. Frank saves her, and you know that's that. And then they go down and down and down until you get to the entrance of this like underground cave. And but then they also see the sub. And for Smokey, it's just like, yay! <laughs> so they all go to this underground cave, and there they see the tree, which is, you know, long dead. It's very dormant. Uh, it can only be, as they found out, uh, it only blooms under the light of a blood moon. Which, I mean, they, they play the stakes so high in this. I mean, a... A blood moon literally happens like during an eclipse. So I mean, it's irregular timed, but a blood moon can happen fairly often, like every few years, like sometimes even a year. Net. So I I don't know. It's like l lunar eclipses are are fairly often happen fairly often like it could be multiple times a year at least at most like once a year i don't i don't i'd need to look at it but i mean this is by no means like every 10,000 years this tree blooms it's just like no this this tree blooms on a fairly often basis <laughs> and it 
yeah, it's it's kind of silly. But anyway, so it blooms. That's the blood moon. They go, and it's just like... She says, I'll help you if you give me a petal, because he's already promised Frank a petal. It's just like, I'm only giving up one petal. And that's it. So she she plays to kill Frank. He falls in. And he's just like, all right, let's let's do this. No. Oh. <laughs> so there was a point earlier in the film, I missed this out, but uh, the conquistadors let Joaquim know what, what's going on when they discover like where where they are. Uh, the guy with bees, he sends a few bees, and it just leads to this funny scene where he's just like, can you tell me where they are? And the bees are just like flying on this map, and and his crew is just like, are we taking orders from bees? And they ask, like. <laughs> Can it give us coordinates? And he's just like, don't be stupid. <laughs> it, was, it was so cheesy. Oh, and Frank is full of just bad dad jokes and puns. And it was, that was amazing. It's just like, I, I once had a cross-eyed girlfriend, but it didn't work out. We just couldn't see eye to eye. <laughs> Plus, I think she was seeing someone on the side. It was, it was, it, it was funny. <laughs> it was. There were some cringe moments, like there, like there was a point where she's pull, pulling the stab out, and there's a bunch of like just sexual innuendos, and that was kind of cringy. That to me was a bit cringy, but for most of it, like the jokes landed, they were funny. You know, it was bad dad humor, but I mean that's kind of what makes that a that a funny genre of humor so so anyway after that blah 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 so the tree blooms when they figure out the arrowhead is not an arrowhead it's a thing that goes to a pict like pictographic like carving with a red stone being a heart being man uh or a great hunter i believe in like native mythology and then the other pieces being the moon. So they put moon the heart in, they start glowing. It opens a door that allows the light of the moon in to revive this tree. And it's brightly blue and so, so crazy. But anyway, as this is going on, the conquistadors, like he kills the bees when he finds out where Lily and Frank are. So, but the conquistadors figure it out, and they go and they attack. And there's this huge fight that ensues, and this is where the bad CGI just really you notice it, and it's just like, ah, oh. it was it was not good. But so yes, there's a fight. And Joaquin gets stuck in the in the trees. And then the conquistadors go and they attack Frank. And then he has this plan to block the path of the river. Because his, his whole thing was he wanted to get a pedal to restore himself to life. And then he's going to kill himself. Because he's he's just seen everything. Like you find out that he built that village. He built the boat from scratch. Like just he he's seen so many people and friends come and go. He he just has become numb to it all. And you know, Lily doesn't want him to die. Wants him to be with her, spend his 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 days with her. It was kind of bizarre. Again, the romance. I just I felt that they it was seemed way too forced for what it was. Like I thought they had great chemistry and interacting. But the romance thing I felt was just way too forced, way too crammed down my throat. I don't think it worked fully. So, I mean, there's that. But anyway, so he gets this plan to block off the river, and then they'll be stuck there. And he does. And as the river tries to pull them back, they just get stuck into the wall forever and always. They're just like, don't do this. This is worse than torture. And I don't know, it's 
in eternity just being frozen into the junk but but anyways she realizes lily realizes her feelings um you know akeem escapes he fought and then he's going to kill them and mcgregor like kills him through an explosion a piece of a statue comes down and just like <laughs> squishes him flat <laughs> but anyway she so she goes up to him gives this pedal to him and you know there's a little crack in the in the stone but nothing else happens even though the pedal disappears into its mouth like how that works fully i don't know um But yeah, uh, after then she walks away. Then the jaguar is just like, and here's something. He's free, and decides to stay with him. And then at that moment, you know, there's a, another hole crack in the wall that shines on a branch. Another br and another petal comes to for her to continue her work. Which again, it's just like why why do that but anyway so we go back to london where her brother is mcgregor he is essentially rejecting their invitation to join for lily to join the royal society and then pretty much you can stick your invitation up your ass. Oceation. <laughs> oh, really cheesy. But yeah, then uh, you go back to Lily and Frank. She's teaching Frank to drive a car. It's going kind of awkwardly. But yeah, it's... And th that's where it ends. So that was Jungle Cruise. I, again, thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it hit... It did what it was supposed to be, and it did so in a way that exceeded my expectation. Um, and I think they did a good job. I don't see this as being sequel material. Uh, hopefully, it's just a one and done. It it, it did a good job. Like I said, I, I give this a 7.5. It was close to 8, but the, the CGI, forced romance, and a few other things. I wish there was a few more puzzles, you know, logic, thoughts. Anyway, but yeah, like... There were a few things that held it back, but for the most part, it did its job really well. So, 7 out of 10. was almost an 8, but again, just had too much holding it back. Um, but yeah, so that is Jungle Cruise. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I apologize that it took me so long to get it out. Yeah, just a lot of stuff going on right now. But anyway, glad you could join. You all take care. I'll catch you next time. See ya.